Hi there, I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. Let's talk about the tropics out here. We have a high chance of development. Now, as always, these updates are not meant to hype or anything like that. Let's break this down and talk about what this means at this time. And at this time, this does not mean a hurricane is coming towards the east coast of the United States. In fact, as I've said in my last few videos here, the first thing you always want to do is not look at the long range models or anything like that, but you want to look at where this area is right now. And at this time, it still remains rather disorganized. It's not even being labeled an invest area yet by the National Hurricane Center, but it does have this convection around it. And in fact, if we take a look at water vapor imagery, we can see there's a lot of moisture building up in it. It's moving over an area of very warm sea surface temperatures, and it can continues to move off towards the west here, uh, but there is a little bit of shear, and you can see the shear on the northern side of it just like that. Despite all of this convection, it has to continue to combat with that, and even a little bit of dry air on the northern periphery. So there's a look at where we have it right now. The initialization is still relatively weak, but let's flip over towards some of the guidance, and this is probably what a lot of you have seen, part specifically with the GFS, the uh, American model, showing this kind of slowly developing as we go ahead through the mid to latter part of this upcoming week and this is why in the near term they have a low chance of development but seven days out they do have it intensifying as you see with the graphic above me here uh with that said you see here by the 24th and the 25th the gfs does pull it off towards the west and kind of rounding the bermuda high located just towards its east right there the ecmwf in fact has been showing something very similar with the placement of the bermuda high east of bermuda and allowing these to kind of recurve and turn towards the north and that's the key key thing, the factor of the Bermuda high, where that is going to be placed. A little bit of a slower development could move this high a little bit further towards the west. Sooner would be further towards the east, but all guidance continues to show that. And one reason why that I also anticipate this to stay well towards the east of the United States is because of the placement of the jet stream. We've had this persistent trough over the southeast for about a week now, consistent nor'easter across uh, the northeast Florida, southeast Georgia, high winds and stuff like that. A so Associated with this jet stream and as long as this dip in the jet continues to remain in place that acts like a wall basically a, a, a curve and a bend here in the overall pattern that allows this to turn towards the north and you know what we're going to do we're actually going to take a, I'm going to take a moment just to kind of explain and break down the overall background flow here. And then what I'm showing you what I was just had up there a second ago. This is the basically a lower to mid level overall background flow here. And um, this just kind of shows you the where these tropical systems would like to go. And you can see our little kind of troughing right there. You see that just well towards the east of the Windward Islands. And then here you have that flow rounding the Bermuda High, which is located off here on the top right of your screen. And if anything wanted to develop, this is the general pattern it would want to take just basically following around like that staying towards the east of that um, jet stream located over northeast florida now of course this n doesn't stay consistent it changes from day to day but the general pattern is where you're seeing it right now with that semi-permanent high now we can take a look at the gfs these are the spaghettios i like to call them these are ensemble models basically within the gfs you have 30 different runs that get averaged together and showing right here all those runs most of them do keep it well towards the east now these little outliers that is interesting and that's something why i think we continue to say you should continue to monitor this the bulk of it does show it developing and staying off towards the east of bermuda but there is some kind of little members showing the ensembles pulling this further towards the west but the ecmwf on the other hand is a little bit more consistent with it staying well out to sea so if you have all the ensemble members that is an increasing confidence that it stays well towards Towards the east if this does develop which both the models are kind of showing that in its kind of bulk form towards the uh, east of the United States so yeah that's that's why I like to look at this and this is just an example of one of the things that meteorologists look at more than just one part particular run and how that um, is showing where a storm is going. One thing that I, I think we can be confident on, this will be a big wave maker, kind of like what we've seen with Aaron. Even if it does only become a tropical storm or anything like that, it definitely would be kicking up some swells just combined with a general easterly flow out here. So surfers along uh, Puerto Rico, the Windward Islands, uh, even out towards the Bahamas, you're going to be looking at some pretty decent rollers coming on shore. So yeah, as always though, you know, this is still a low chance in the 
the 48 hour period. It's a high chance an extended one, but we know that could be dialed back. I think the point is you want to be aware of this, but at least at this time, I'm not concerned, terribly concerned for impacts here in the United States. Still needs to be watched. As always, I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. Hey, if you got any questions, shoot me a message. I would love to hear from you. Stay safe out there.